In the northernmost night, watchman base of the Westeros continent, three night watchmen set out on their usual patrol. Night watchmen are a unique tradition of the Westeros continent, where various criminals are welcomed. No matter what heinous crimes they have committed in the past, as long as they voluntarily join the ranks of the Night's Watch, their past is forgiven. However, from now on, they are not allowed to inherit family wealth, glory, or status, nor are they permitted to marry and have children. In addition to the truly wicked, there are also many bastards who are not accepted by their noble families, whether by choice or by force, who join the Night's Watch and arrive at the snowy forests of the north, where snow covers the land year round. The three individuals split up, and one of them arrives at a wildling camp, witnessing a scene that fills him with intense fear. The camp is scattered with scattered bones, as if it has suffered a horrifying attack. Terrified, the night watchman quickly mounts his horse and flees, reuniting with his companions. Upon learning of the situation, the leader of the group is unconcerned and dismisses the other person's suggestion to return to the base, insisting on personally investigating the matter. The three individuals return to the scene of the incident, only to find that there is nothing there. They search for clues in the area when suddenly, the deceased individuals come back to life and kill the leader. The first person saw the dead little girl resurrected in front of his eyes and ran away in a panic. Just as he catches his breath upon seeing another teammate, a dark figure suddenly appears and decapitates his companion. The night watchman, who is now mentally disturbed, is captured by the cavalry of the Northern Kingdom. Leaving the night watchman legion without authorization is a capital offense, so please report to the Duke of Eddard in the north. At the Duke's residence, several of Eddard's sons are practicing archery while the daughters are learning domestic skills with the maidservants. The youngest son, Brandon, lacks aptitude for martial arts, which leads to him being mocked by his older brothers. Father offers him encouraging words, and Brandon musters up the courage. However, to everyone's surprise, his sister Arya steals the spotlight, and they all burst into laughter. The steward comes to report the capture of the escaped night watchman. Eddard's mood becomes heavy as he realizes that he must personally execute this unfortunate individual. Eddard refuses his wife Caitlin's plea for mercy, emphasizing that the law is the law and cannot be disregarded by anyone. He requests for Brandon to accompany him, believing that the only way for the boy to quickly become a man is to witness bloodshed firsthand. Caitlin looks at Eddard's illegitimate son, Jon Snow, with a complex and conflicting expression in her eyes. On the execution ground, the Night Watchman knew that he was bound to die, and he kept telling Eddard that the White Walkers should prepare early when the White Walkers came. Eddard personally sees off the Night Watchman, and Brandon, inspired by Snow, witnesses the entire execution. Eddard explains to Brandon that the reason he personally carries out the execution is to show respect for every life. As for the Night Watchman's claim of the threat of the others, Eddard firmly believes that the others have been extinct for thousands of years, considering it to be nothing more than the Night Watchman's baseless talk. On the way home, everyone saw a moose that was attacked and killed, and the dire wolf that died with the elk, and a litter of pups. At Snow's suggestion, Eddard allows each of his children to adopt one of the dire wolf pups, symbolizing their family crest, and Snow adopted a different species under the ridicule of Eddard's adopted son. Came to King's Landing, the capital of Westeros continent, the death knell rang, and Aaron died. Cersei is watching the funeral when her own brother Jaime comes to her side. The siblings share laughter and discuss childhood memories, hinting at some secret that Aaron may have known about them. Therefore, they are particularly pleased by Aaron's death. Eddard is in the backyard, sharpening his sword when Caitlin approaches him. The two have different religious beliefs. Caitlin follows the newly born seven gods, while Eddard is a follower of the old gods. Caitlin informs Eddard that a raven has brought news of the death of Eddard's mentor, Joan R. Wren. He is also the husband of his sister Caitlin's sister Lysa, who married Aaron. On their way to the north, Robert, their friend, is likely coming to offer Eddard the position of Hand of the King. 
The entire capital of the North, Winterfell, is actively preparing to welcome their arrival. Brandon runs to the rooftop and sees the grand procession of the king's entourage. Caitlin scolds Brandon again for his mischievous behavior. The entourage enters the castle, and Arya, who is tomboyish, arrives late. Meanwhile, Sansa, the eldest daughter, blushes shyly upon seeing Prince Joffrey. Robert arrives, and everyone bows as he warmly embraces his long, unseen friend, Eddard. Robert greets each of Eddard's children, while Cersei remains aloof and indifferent, going through the motions. Regardless of Cersei's dissuasion, Robert insisted on going to Eddard's mausoleum first. The two reminisce about their youth and the time they spent learning under John Arryn. Suddenly, Robert changes the subject and directly appoints Eddard as the Hand of the King. Eddard's refusal is met with a direct rejection from the King, who emotionally blackmails him. Since Eddard helped him seize the throne in the past, Robert believes it is Eddard's duty to help him maintain it, so that he can indulge in his pleasures. Robert is still bitter about not marrying Eddard's sister years ago, and he wants to make up for it by having his son marry one of Eddard's daughters. Cersei and James' other brother, Tyrion, is known as the Imp. Tyrion is incredibly intelligent and is a well-known figure in Westeros, but his personal life is very chaotic. Jaime finds his beloved brother in a whorehouse and brings him some stray women. He reminds his brother not to forget to attend the banquet tonight. Robert, with tears in his eyes, gazes at the statue of Eddard's sister. His beloved was taken away by the crown prince of the Targaryen dynasty. Although Robert rebelled and personally killed his rival and overthrew the Targaryen dynasty, Remnants of the previous dynasty still exist across the narrow sea in the city of Pentos, biding their time for a comeback. Daenerys and her brother Viserys are the last surviving members of the Targaryen dynasty. In order to regain their kingdom, Viserys decides to marry his beautiful sister off to Khal Drogo, the leader of the Dothraki nomadic tribe. With the help of Drogo's powerful cavalry, they plan to reclaim Westeros. While Daenerys remains calm and composed, Viserys always boasts arrogantly of being the true Dragon King. Viserys is satisfied with Khal Drogo's bravery and skill in battle, and Khal Drogo is equally pleased with the beauty of Daenerys. However, Daenerys doesn't want to marry a fierce stranger, but Viserys doesn't care about her feelings at all. Viserys only cares about obtaining the Dothraki cavalry, regardless of whether his sister marries the leader of the nomadic tribe or someone else. Sansa yearns to marry Joffrey and even begs her mother to persuade her father to agree to the marriage. During the banquet, the guests are treated to delicious food and wine, with Robert enjoying himself and flirting with the serving girls. Cersei watches coldly without showing any emotions while Snow practices swordplay alone in the training ground. Uncle Benjen, who joined Night Watchmen a long time ago, Eddard's younger brother came back, and they embraced warmly. Snow is not allowed by Caitlin to attend the banquet, and he knows that joining the Night's Watch is his only way out. Brynden, watching the determined Snow, doesn't immediately agree to his request. Snow and Tyrion meet for the first time, and Tyrion comforts Snow, who struggles with feelings of inferiority. He jests that, in their father's eyes, all dwarves in the world are bastards. Eddard meets Benjen and asks him about the Night's Watchman who was executed, wanting to know what happened. Benjen tells Eddard that the man wasn't a coward, and the information he provided may have been useful. The two jokingly discuss their family motto, Winter is coming. Cersei scrutinizes her future daughter-in-law and bluntly asks her questions that almost overwhelm the young girl. Jaime intercepts Eddard and informs him that the king is organizing a grand tournament to celebrate his appointment. Jaime, who has always questioned Eddard's martial skills, provokes him repeatedly to fight him. Arya teases her sister, who wants to maintain a ladylike image in front of Joffrey, and ends up being carried away by their brother upon their mother's signal. After the banquet, Eddard lamented to Cateln in the bedroom unwilling to go south to take up the post of Prime Minister. Master Lewin requests an audience and informs Eddard and Caitlin that Caitlin's sister, who resides in the Airy, has sent an urgent letter. The letter reveals that the Lannister family was responsible for Aaron's death, 
and Caitlin and her son have secretly returned to the airy overnight. Caitlin was in chaos, Eddard comforted her, but was suspicious when asked. Master Lewin, driven by loyalty to the crown, repeatedly advises Eddard to go south to protect the king and save the country. Kael Drogo held a grand wedding banquet to marry Daenerys. The little princess looked at this banquet custom similar to primitive people, feeling uneasy. According to Dothraki customs, if more than three people die during the wedding feast, it is considered a failure. Kael Drogo looks happily at the scene below when suddenly a man appears. He is a noble from Westeros who was exiled by Eddard for illegally selling slaves. He presents Daenerys with a gift, while the governor of Pentos also sends a gift to the new Dothraki queen, Cersei, in the form of three fossilized dragon eggs. Under the watchful eyes of the Dothraki people, Daenerys nervously follows Kael Drogo's footsteps. Kael Drogo rides with his newlywed wife to the seaside, where Daenerys gazes across the strait at her homeland. With tears, she fulfills her duties as a wife. Eddard and Robert are going out of the city for a hunt, and Eddard lovingly smiles at Brandon, who is waiting in the corner. After their father leaves, with no one watching him, mischievous Brandon climbs up the abandoned tower and unexpectedly witnesses Cersei and Jaime meeting here in secret. To prevent their illicit affair from being exposed, Jaime pushes Brandon off the tower. Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.